Throughout history, economies have gone through periods of growth and prosperity, followed by sharp downturns and recessions. Among these downturns, the Great Depression of the 1930s is the most infamous. However, there have been other depressions, both large and small, that have struck before and after this time. What's particularly interesting is that many of these depressions were preceded by similar events or patterns. In this video, we will explore seven key factors tend to happen before the Great Depression. By understanding these events, we can better recognize the warning signs of an economic collapse and prepare for what's to come. Number 1. Financial Speculation and Market Bubbles One of the most common factors leading up to a depression is the rise of financial speculation and the creation of economic bubbles. This occurs when investors pour money into stocks, real estate, or other assets in the hope of making quick profits. As more people invest, prices rise rapidly, creating what is known as a bubble. In the 1920s, the United States experienced a period of rapid economic growth known as the Roaring Twenties. Stock prices soared, and many Americans invested heavily in the stock market. However, much of this growth was driven by speculation, not actual economic productivity. Even though technological advancements transformed daily life, with electricity becoming widespread and household appliances revolutionizing productivity. The birth of modern mass media emerged as radio became popular, reaching about 40% of American households by 1930. Women gained the right to vote in 1920, with the 19th Amendment leading to newfound social freedoms. Everyone thought this time is different, but as Sir John Templeton pointed it out, that are the most four dangerous word in the English dictionary. The Roaring Twenties came crashing down by 1929, the stock market bubble burst leading to the Wall Street crash and eventually the Great Depression. From the peak in September 1929 to the bottom in July 1932, the Dow Jones Industrial Average experienced a staggering loss of 89.2%. In total, the stock market wiped out an estimated $14 billion in stock value in a single day. When all the smoke is cleared, at the end of the tunnel, the market had lost $30 billion in value, which is approximately equivalent to $528 billion in today's money. The Roaring Twenties is a massacre for those that are over-leveraged during this time. However, it teaches us valuable lessons about the balance between growth and risk. While periods of fast economic growth can bring new ideas and technology, they also show how dangerous it is to take big financial risks without fully understanding them. Investors should be careful about borrowing too much money, especially when making investments, and should avoid taking risks they don't completely get. It's also important to spread out investments and keep some money saved up for tough times. While economic growth can bring prosperity, we must always be prepared for market ups and downs. Number 2. Runaway When you see excessive debt and easy credit Another major factor that often precedes economic depression is the buildup of excessive debt. When individuals, companies, or governments borrow more money than they can afford to repay, it creates financial instability. Easy access to credit often encourages this behavior as people take on loans to invest in risky ventures. The 2008 Great Recession was the result of the surge in mortgage lending, even to people with poor credit. Banks and lenders gave out loans too easily, believing that housing prices would continue to rise indefinitely. When the housing bubble burst, millions of people defaulted on their loans, triggering a global financial crisis. Many people lost their jobs and faced financial hardships due to the economic collapse. Having an emergency fund can provide a safety net during tough times, helping cover essential expenses when income is disrupted. There were signs of trouble in the housing market before the collapse, but many people ignored or underestimated the risks. Being aware of economic warning signs and acting cautiously can help prevent or lessen the impact of financial downturns. Many people and even institutions took on risks they didn't fully understand, particularly with complex financial products like subprime mortgages. They all drank the Kool-Aid and drowned in a lot of sitting empty real estate. This shows the importance of educating yourself about investments, loans, and financial markets before making big decisions. Number 3. Growing Wealth Gap Income inequality played a big part in causing the Great Depression. In the late 1920s, the richest 1% of people had about 21% of all the money. This meant that while rich people had lots of extra money, most people couldn't afford to buy many things. This led to a problem where there were too many products but not enough people who could buy them. The economy needs a balance between what's being made and what people can buy, but the big gap between rich and poor made this hard. Also, because rich people during the time had so much money, they started making risky bets in the stock market, which made it unstable. When people don't have much money to spend, it hurts the whole economy. 
The rich also had more power to influence the government, leading to policies that mostly helped wealthy people. All these things together made the economy weak and easy to break. When the stock market crashed in 1929, showing how dangerous it can be when there's a big difference between rich and poor in a country, we have to remember that consumer spending is what drives the economy. When a large portion of the population can't afford to buy goods and services, it hurts the entire economy. A strong middle class with purchasing power is important for economic stability. Number four, fall in industrial output and labor market decline. A decline in industrial production is a key indicator of economic distress, often signaling broader economic troubles. During the Great Depression, industrial production in the United States fell by nearly 50% between 1929 and 1932, with manufacturing output declining by 36% within four years. This dramatic drop led to widespread factory closures and massive job losses, with unemployment skyrocketing to around 25% in the U.S., representing about 13 million Americans by 1933. The lack of jobs meant people couldn't afford basic goods, worsening the depression in a vicious cycle. The effects were global, with world trade plummeting by 66% between 1929 and 1934. More recent examples illustrate the continued importance of this indicator. During the 2008 financial crisis, U.S. industrial production in manufacturing fell by 10.8% between 2008 to 2009, while the COVID-19 pandemic caused a sharp industrial production declined on average by around 28% in G20 countries in just two months between February and April 2020. The ripple effects of declining industrial production include reduced business investment, decreased consumer confidence, potential deflation, and increased pressure on the financial sector. While the service sector has grown in importance in many developed economies in recent decades, industrial production remains a closely watched indicator by economists and policymakers as recoveries in this sector often lead broader economic recoveries. Number five, trade imbalances and tariffs. Global trade is like countries buying and selling things from each other. It's important for keeping economies healthy, but sometimes problems can happen when countries don't balance their buying and selling well. During the Great Depression in the 1930s, the U.S. made a big mistake. They created a law called the Smoot-Hawley Tariff Act. This law made it really expensive to buy things from other countries by adding extra taxes, called tariffs, to imported goods. It was like putting up a big wall around the country to keep other products out. This didn't work out well at all. Other countries got upset and did the same thing to U.S. products. As a result, countries stopped trading with each other as much. The amount of stuff being bought and sold between countries dropped by more than 50%. This made the Great Depression even worse. Since then, We've learned that it's usually better when countries trade freely with each other. After World War II, many countries agreed to lower their tariffs, which helped the global economy grow. In today's world, trade is very complicated because many products are made in multiple countries, and we also trade things we can't see or touch, like computer software or streaming services. The main lesson is that trade between countries is important for a healthy economy, but it needs to be managed carefully to make sure it's fair for everyone. Number six, declining consumer confidence. Consumer confidence is a crucial economic indicator that reflects how optimistic people feel about the overall state of the economy. It is typically measured through surveys like the Consumer Confidence Index, CCI, and the Consumer Sentiment Index. When consumer confidence is high, people are more likely to spend money driving economic growth. Conversely, low confidence can lead to reduced spending and economic slowdown. Various factors can influence consumer confidence, including rising unemployment, political uncertainty, financial instability, inflation rates, stock market performance, housing market conditions, and geopolitical events. During the 2008 financial crisis, consumer confidence in the U.S. fell to its lowest level since records began in 1967, with the CCI dropping to 25.3 in February 2009 compared to a historical average of around 100. In response, the U.S. government implemented a $787 billion stimulus package in 2009 to boost economic activity and restore confidence. Consumer confidence is often seen as a leading economic indicator that can predict future trends and affect different sectors of the economy differently. Luxury goods and non-essential items typically see reduced demand first when confidence drops. In today's interconnected global economy, Consumer confidence in one major economy can have ripple effects worldwide. When you see this indicator drop as low as 2008 and 2009, this can be a sign of a great recession coming around the corner. Number seven, 
technological disruption. New technology can be beneficial, but it can also create problems in the economy. When new inventions come along, they often replace older ways of doing things, which can lead to job losses and force people to find new types of work. A good example of this is the Industrial Revolution, which occurred about 200 years ago when many machines were invented. These machines could perform tasks that people used to do by hand, leading to significant changes. Factories were built and many people moved from farms to cities for work, while some old jobs, like hand-weaving cloth, disappeared because machines could do the work faster and cheaper. Today, we're seeing similar shifts due to computers and robots. Online shopping is becoming more popular, affecting traditional stores, and robots are taking over more factory jobs, reducing employment in manufacturing. Even office jobs are impacted by computer programs that can handle tasks like basic accounting or data entry. These changes can be challenging for many individuals. Some lose their jobs and struggle to find new ones, while others must learn new skills to keep up. To address these issues, governments and companies are offering training programs to teach new skills, creating laws to protect workers, and changing school systems to prepare students for future job demands. Throughout history, these seven factors have played a critical role in the lead-up to major economic depressions. Financial speculation, excessive debt, rising inequality, industrial decline, trade imbalances, low consumer confidence, and technological disruption all serve as warning signs that an economy is headed for trouble. By understanding these patterns and learning from history, we can better recognize the early signs of an economic collapse. In a world that is constantly changing, critical thinking and informed decision-making are more important than ever. The next time you hear about rising debt levels, political turmoil, or a market bubble, take a moment to reflect on the lessons of the past. After all, history has a way of repeating itself. Thank you for making it this far. Are you seeing any of these seven signs present in our world today? If so, which signs is the most concerning for you? Please leave it in the comment below. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for making it this far. If you like this video, you might want to share it with a like-minded friend. Thank you, and as always, stay blessed.